The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera, and by Shootproof, the easy way to proof and sell your photos online. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe Show. Join hosts Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they chat about the art and business of photography. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 116. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host Trevor Curran. On last week's episode, we talked about Fuji discontinuing some of their film lines, ad-free TV from Apple, and asked the question, can working for free be profitable? If you haven't watched last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com, in iTunes, listen with the popular Stitcher, tune in, and Xbox music apps, or watch in HD on TiVo. Hey, Joe, we are back after a week off. How you doing, my friend? Very, very well. A little bit rested. Good. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, last, last week we, we took our week off and kind of, you had a lot of work to do. I ended up going on vacation. We went up with the family to Orlando. Nice. And, you know, we, we do that sometimes in the summer. We always do in the winter. It's a lot of fun when it's cooler down in South Florida and you have less of the, um, let's say, the travelers from up north as well as Europe <laughs> that kind of clutter up Orlando and it just gets to be nuts for us. Sure, you know, yeah. The locals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we, it wasn't all sun in the fun. We ended up, you know, we, you know, fun in the sun. We ended up with like a tornado. And we were on the top floor of this uh, um, hotel and started hearing like this freight train coming by. And Yeah, <laughs> and that's scary outside. stuff. I mean, normally you guys don't get tornadoes down there, right? No. You just get the hurricanes. No. We get the occasional yeah. tornado that, that blows through up here in the Northeast. But ours are small. I mean, we've got little tiny yeah. things. They'll knock down a tree or two. And, and usually that's about it. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, down in Florida, you don't normally get them. That's yeah, we don't we don't get them. Kind of scary. And they're small. The same thing over here. We'll get water spouts sometimes over the ocean. Right. Um, you know, sometimes we'll get something, you know, a little something, but never nothing really big. But yeah, it was like, you know, what's going on here? We're we supposed to be, you know, having fun, you know, with, uh, you know, in the pool. And all of a sudden we have lightning storm. Our, our hotel goes without electric for like an hour and a half. <sighs> Uh, you know, it was one of those things. But, you guys are all you know, huddling in the bathtub, right? Yeah. yeah <laughs> Bracing we're, for impact. It, 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 yeah, we're not in Kansas, so we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we're pretty good. But yeah, you know, we're used to this kind of stuff. We get the hurricanes, you know. Yep. But, uh, you know, talking about hurricanes, it's like we haven't seen a hurricane for yeah, quite some don't time. Say that, not that man. I want yeah. to see one. They're going to be rolling but, through uh, soon. Yeah, when we get hit, we get hit hard. I remember one year we ended up getting, uh, what was it, like two or three hurricanes within like yep. weeks apart, which is just, it was kind of nuts. Generators so going we did all crazy. The, yeah. Absolutely. We have the kids, you know, going back to school. So we did this back to school shopping, which we love, and my wallet loves it loves it even more. <laughs> um, yeah, so we did that while we we're up there. And you did a couple okay. park things too, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we did some parks. Uh, Orlando you know, has so much to offer. I mean, it's not just so Disney. Much. I mean, there's so many no. different things to do up there. You know what we saw? We saw the Titanic um, like exhibition type thing. It was really, really phenomenal. Um, you know, I encourage anyone that goes to Orlando, definitely check out this Titanic um, exhibit. It's like on one of the main drags. And uh, they just did a just a phenomenal job. They had like a lot of the um, like uh, pieces from the Titanic was there. Um but then they also like recreated certain areas. And the thing that was really cool, um, you had someone that actually, it was like a guided tour, but the, the guide was actually, I mean, he spoke like, I don't know, Gaelic or something. I mean, mm. it was hard to understand it, but right. it was like he just got off the boat. He did a fabulous job. I mean, he had, you know, people crying. I mean, it was just really, really um, intense. They did a fantastic, they even had like the iceberg at the end that so they're telling the story of the titanic they not told just us, yeah. you know the, here's a piece from the titanic okay yeah gotcha. no it was like from beginning to the end it was huh. like you started out where you were you know you had your ticket and what was really cool is they gave you um like one of the manifests one of the the person's like information and you were that person and at the very end um you got to see this board with all these etched names and the names that wow. were hollow 
were the ones that didn't make it and the names that were full are the ones that made it and you were able to find out if your person made it wow and um it was just really it was moving it was touching they did a fantastic job it was worth every penny so um, were you the leonardo cool. dicaprio character standing no. up i'm the king of the world <laughs> I, w- I wish it was they did have like the little car you know and he was like yeah ladies you'll know what this car is all about oh uh, yeah <laughs> celine <laughs> you know, the movie. singing yeah <laughs> yeah 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 so um but yeah they did just a fabulous job it was nice. it was really cool so um that's good but, it's good uh, anyways, to get, a, you, get away for a couple days you know yeah. you gotta it's summertime we all need that little bit of a break to recharge the batteries I and mean, we're going to be doing a couple uh a couple day things here and there i've i've just been kind of really busy this summer which i guess is right. a good thing i mean i don't want to complain about it but you know it really would be kind of nice to be able to just take the week off and and go away somewhere for a little while but <laughs> I, honestly, right. I just have a lot going on right now, and I can't really afford to take the time off. So we're just going to do a couple day things here and there. We're going to hit the the Jersey Shore, go to a couple different places down there. Um, we've got a uh, a park that's local to us that we're going to take the kids to. It's like a water park and you know amusement yeah, park and stuff. So we're gonna we went there once this summer already. We're gonna go back again. That's always fun. They have a blast, right? And uh, it's it's geared for smaller kids anyway. So uh, yeah. so it's perfect yeah. for us. And uh, right, yeah, that'll be right. It. We're we're hoping well. We were, we were talking about earlier um, that uh, you actually spent some time working on a project that you've been you know trying to work on um, you know through all of the everyone else's projects, and you finally got a chance to work on your own. Right? Yeah, you know, I am the typical plumber with the leaky pipes. You yeah, know? the shoemaker that goes without shoes. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. you know we always talk about websites, right? How important it is to have a website show your work, have information there, contact information, all that stuff. I have not had one. Well, that's not true. I've had one um, and it was up and running for a short time. And then I was in the process of revamping it to make it a responsive website, you know, because that's what I'm, you know, promoting now and selling. So, I mean, obviously it only makes sense that the website should be responsive. So I was reworking that and started the process and just have to keep putting it on hold, on hold, on hold, on hold. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on everybody else's stuff. But an opportunity came up. Um, Right now we have our um, state fair going on. It's a big to do. Um, Years ago, it used to just be like a local fair, like a county fair. Um, Now it's actually the state fair. It's the New Jersey state fair. Um, Nice. So it's like a big to do. We have people. It's pretty big. Yeah, we have people coming from everywhere: New York, Pennsylvania, South Jersey. I mean, it really gets a lot of people through there. I mean, there'll be like millions of people that that come through there over the course of the week. So um, I had a great opportunity to be um, able to exhibit, let's say, at the fair. So awesome. you know, we've talked about the chain. You know how I'm involved with my local chamber of commerce, and every year they have a tent at the fair that promotes the chamber and the services that it offers, but also the tourism aspect of the county that we live in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they basically, they need people to work the booth. So they they put the call out to the members to say, you know, if you wanna come and do a four hour shift at the booth, you know, you're allowed to promote your business and stuff your information into the information bags and and all of that type of stuff. So I'm new to the chamber and it's kind of like, is this going to be worthwhile or not? I don't know, but, you know, let me try it and see what it turns out to be. And right. unfortunately, it was a rainy day that day. Um, <laughs> I got there right. at noontime. It was pouring. By the time it was ready for me to go down to the booth, it had stopped and the sun started coming out. So the traffic started picking up and, and everything. So that was good. Um, you know, so for me, I didn't really get a lot of FaceTime with people, but I did get the opportunity to meet several other chamber members who I have never met before. And that actually turned out to be a really good thing. Um, One person is uh, involved in uh, promotional items like tchotchkes, you know, the things with your company names and stuff on it, which is perfect because I need to find somebody that can deliver those types of materials for myself and also for my clients. So that was a great connection. So, I mean, there was some, definitely some benefits that came of it, but I printed up a whole bunch of brochures, you know, as a designer and everything, I have to put something like that together, printed up a whole bunch of them, stuffed them in a bunch of um, bags of information. I think it was like 50 different bags of information. Nice. And uh, we were back there the next day, my wife and kids and I, and uh, all those bags were gone. They were long gone. 
So yeah, that's fifty people that know about you and your service, and it costs you nothing. Yeah, so, that's or right. Next to nothing, you know, just a print cost. So that's great. Now, so that was really good. Um, you know, and and I got a phone call uh, this past week as well from the president of the chamber, and she actually asked me to be the head chair for their technology committee. Um, That's awesome. Which is pretty cool. I mean, she knows what I do for a living and she knows how important all of this technology, social media, website development, you know, all of this online presence, how important it is to business. And Absolutely. she knows that there's so many people that are chamber members who are living in the dark ages, you know. <laughs> and uh, so she really right. sees the value in starting this committee. And she, so she had asked me to do that. And that's great. I mean, that's a great honor. I'm really uh, glad that. Um, she thought of me first and uh, that it's awesome. And I, I really see a lot of great opportunities coming from that. You know, yeah, it's a, the whole idea of top of mind, you know, you get it's the B2B, you know, business to business, you know, being in there and you can actually help, um, you know, the other businesses, that's right. you know, it's, it, it works out good. That's it ends up being, you know, your B2B ends up being bread and butter. That's right. Um, and then the rest is just kind of, you know, icing on the cake. So yeah. I mean, that's you fantastic. Can, well, congratulations on that. That's fantastic. That's yeah. Good. Thanks. I mean, I mean, that's great because, you know, all of my work in the past and one of the reasons why I never killed myself getting my website up and running is because all of my work has been word of mouth. I've never had to right. do any advertising. It all kind of just came from referrals. And I've been very busy off of referral work. And sure. I mean, that's great. But, you know, selling technology, I mean, I had, obviously I had to have my own website up and running. So I just right, right. made the effort. I, I treated it like a, a regular client project. I just knuckled down and did it. And it looks good. And I, all I have, it's like, it's like 90% done. Um, once nice. I get a couple portfolio pages up there, I'll give you guys the URL. You can go check out the work that I've been doing and see what I'm up to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, something something cool is coming up once again. Um, you know, we have kind of gone um, to this, I guess, this convention for many years now. Um, and it's Photo Plus Expo, guys. It's uh, right around the corner. Um, October 23rd, I believe, through the 26th. Yep. So um, really interesting. If you, you know, if you have... Uh, if you're in the area or if you have the ability to fly in, you know, I encourage it because we've, we've been, you know, we've been going for quite some time now. Um, yeah. You know, we've showed there, we've had a booth there. Um, we've done interviews. We've been, we've done live um, shows from there. Yep. Um, we really enjoy photo plus and look, it's in NYC. I mean, you know, who doesn't want to go and visit New York city at the end of the year? I mean, that's, that's right. That's fantastic. Right? Yeah. The Javits convention center really is a huge facility. Photo plus yeah. expo and WPPI um, take up a really good portion of that building. Um, the whole upper level, the main area is all the exhibit hall. And then the right. lower level is all the seminar rooms. And this year they've got over 90 seminars and, keynote presentations and other symposiums and stuff so i mean right. they and they're celebrating their 30th anniversary so this is yeah, kind of so a it should big, be big a big deal yeah yeah this will be really right. good so and of course you and i are members of the press so we yep. get the uh, the press passes which is always nice we kind of have our own room up there that we can hang right. out at and we usually get a nice goodie bag and you know get a chance to to go around and meet some of the vendors on the floor and reconnect with some people that we've you know, gotten to know yeah. over the years, which is always nice. And we can um, duck in and out of uh, some of the seminars too and check them out. Yeah, exactly. So we'll be, you know, uh, you know, if all goes as planned, we'll be there. Um, we probably won't do live coverage um, this year. It's kind of, it's kind of uh, in the works. We're not sure as of yet, right. but regardless, you know, we'll be there. We'll be reporting back to you guys if, uh, if you can't make it. And, uh, you know, we'll give you the highlights, a little, you know, uh, maybe we'll do an interview here or there or whatnot. And, um, you know, if you are um, in the area and you do attend, you know, we want to meet up with you. So maybe we can, uh, yeah. you know, do like a meetup um, at one of the bar and grills or maybe even there um, uh, during those, you know, one of those three days. So that's something that we're looking into also. So, yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We're, we are definitely a few months out. So, you know, we have some time, but it's some things that we're planning and we're thinking about and trying to you know, think about how we can cover it and how we can get back to you guys with uh, the information just in case you do not 
um, have the ability to um, to go to the event because it is a big event. And, it's you know, a huge event. I mean, really, huge. I would say in the U.S., it's, it is probably the largest photography show now. Yeah. Now that WP- it's not a photo, it's not like a photo kina, you know. No, like no, no, no. It's Cologne, not like photo but, kina, but you know, but it's it's definitely the largest. And it, you know, now that it's WPPI and Photo Plus, the combination, right. it makes it even bigger. Um, right. So yeah, right. it's it, it's great. Yeah, they get a lot of traffic through there. I mean, they'll get you know twenty six thousand people. Yeah to come through there right. over the course of a few days. So it uh, I'm really going to guess it. they'll probably hit over 30 this year just because it is the 30th anniversary yep. and they will we'll probably promote the heck out of it. You guys will get yeah, a Yeah, and they're going to be uh, doing some more special things around the 30th anniversary. I know right. the their tagline is like a, a look at the past and a peek into the future or something like yeah. that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're going to be doing a lot to promote some activities and stuff. They always have their bash, which is great. They have a... Um, a launch pad event where yeah. members of the press and other attendees can go. It's kind of like a tweet up. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, that, yeah. that's what it, it started out. It started life as a tweet up and now it's kind right. of turned into a a product showcase, let's say. Yeah, like kind of meet the people before you meet the people on the floor. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, um, you know, if you guys are interested in into, into it, definitely go and, you know, register soon because right now yeah. I believe you can get tickets for free. Um, later on, you're going to be paying, I don't know, 50, 75, something like yeah. that, um, dollars to get in. So you definitely, if you want to, you know, if you're thinking about it, go register, it's free, get your tickets. And if you can't make it, at least you've registered, you know, they do that to pull as many emails in as possible. I'm sure yeah, yeah. to try to get it and also to get a, a grasp on how many people will attend and it helps them as far as ad promotion and a lot of other things. I'm sure, um, you know, for them, I'm sure it helps them out a lot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and it helps if, you if out, you right? You, get, you going, get in for free. <laughs> yeah, you get in for free. You can get into the trade show floor right. for free. The seminars do cost. You can buy them either a la carte yeah. or you can get like a day long seminar pass or whatever. Um, all that information's on their website. They do have a WPPI University portion of it that yeah. runs on the 23rd, which is like a full day of seminars to, they say, to help you better your skills and, you know, promote your brand. Yeah. So, for the wedding uh, you know, if you are looking for educational aspects, definitely check that out as well. Um, if you are going to go or thinking about going, shoot us an email. Um, let us know that you're thinking about going. We'll we'll put you on a list and, uh, you know, we'll try and and set something up to where, uh, you know, we can get together with a bunch. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, guys, we got more for you, but hang in there one second while we hear from a couple of our sponsors. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. As photographers, we're always trying to increase sales and profits after every event. We shoot an event and have hundreds or even thousands of images that just sit on our hard drives. Perhaps a better workflow would increase sales by getting those valuable images in front of the client. That's where ShootProof comes in. At ShootProof.com, you can have an online gallery for all of your clients' proofing needs. ShootProof helps increase profits while building your brand and securing your photos without charging commission fees on sales. Shootproof galleries display your photos beautifully while helping to streamline your workflow and automate more of your business through their intuitive studio control panel. Once approved, photos can be directly fulfilled through Shootproof's various professional lab partners or fulfilled by you. All Shootproof plans have the same feature set. You simply choose the number of client photos stored, decide what products to sell, and the price. Try Shootproof today by taking advantage of their free 30-day trial offer. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, ShootProof is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans by using promo code DPC20 at checkout. ShootProof. Upload, share, sell, print. 
So, all right, guys, we are back. So, you know, just a moment ago, we were talking about seminars and going to WPPI and Photo Plus Expo, um, you know, maybe going to a university to gleam some type of knowledge from some of the pros out there. And it is, it's crucial. It's really, really important. And, you know, you know, this week we kind of wanted to talk to you guys. It's, it's off season now. It's summer. So, you know, it's time to learn. It's time yeah. to brush up on your skills, right? Because we know once it gets to be, you know, the swing of things towards the end of the year, you're not going to be learning anything. You're going to be, be working. Busy. You're going to be busy working, and that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. are wedding photographers out there, I'm sure, who are busy now. There's a lot of summer weddings going on and stuff. More up here right. in the north. I, I suppose right. down in Florida, it's probably less summer weddings just because it's just yeah. so hot. Um, but I know up here, we're still in full swing. And, uh, but nonetheless, it is, it is usually the summer break. There's not a lot of people maybe needing photographic services right now. You know, if you do commercial work, there's a lot of people at agencies and studios who are kind of on summer break. So, you know, your, your exactly. workload is probably thinned out. So really now is a good time for learning and brushing up on your skills for sure. Yeah. So, you know, a couple of tips for you guys, you know, Start out with the books, you know, seminars, either physical books or electronic books. You know, this universities that we we're just talking about, yep. WPPI and Photo Plus Expo are giving, you know, really, you know, hone in on your craft this way. Because, you know, reading about stuff is really important. Doing is extremely important. Yep. But you kind of you kind of have to, you know, stay abreast to what's new, what's what's hot, what's trending and stuff to kind of hone in on what people want. Because that's yeah. very, very important. And skills change. You know, the, the camera doesn't change too much. It's still, you know, capturing light. And right. it's just techniques that change. So, you know, keeping up with those techniques um, are Following other important. photographers. You know, we talk about social media and blogging and all that stuff. I mean, now is the time to find some photographers, maybe who you don't know of or, you know, who just kind of, you know, have a certain style that kind of sparks some creativity for you and follow them, follow them on exactly. social media, subscribe to their blog, RSS email or something like that. Um, you know, that is really a great way to get inspiration. And then of course, you know, go back to the masters, right? Ansel Adams, all the, all these big photographers out there, big name photographers, past greats and look at their styles and, and exactly, you know, try and learn from them. Yeah. And you know, emulate, yeah, uh, that's, that's you right. know that that works out. Yeah, you never want to really cop. does. You never want to. I mean, like they always say, like on these singing shows, right? The Voice and all right. these things. You know, oh, you you did a great cover of that song and you sounded just like them. Well, you don't want to sound just yeah. like them. You want to make. You don't want to be own. karaoke, right? You don't want to <laughs> do karaoke of photographer, right? Yeah, that's you don't want right. to be that. Definitely emulate. Look at look at the things that you like. Um, you know about those photographers that you admire. Yep, and the masters. And emulate it, you know, because it will it will train your eye, it will train, you know, it'll it'll hone your technique for sure. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of us, as we see all of this gear continuously showing oh, up, yeah. and, we like you know, gear. all the major brands, they're continuously coming up with new gear um, for us to go and dump all that hard earned money that we have made. Yep. You know, don't be one of those, you know, photographers that end up being you know, a collector, a collector of gear, you know, collect photos, really take photographs. You know, if That's you're right. just collecting gear, you know, that it doesn't really help you at all. If you have gear that's been sitting around for six months or more, you know what, just eBay it, you know, Sell Craigslist, it. It. Yep. get rid of it because you're not going to use it. And there's no reason for it to just depreciate sitting on your shelves, you know, unless you want to collect you know, yeah, antiques. unless you want to collect a line of cameras and to display them in your studio as, as right. uh, something visually to look at when people come through the door or what have you. I mean, that's fine. I mean, I get that. Right. But, you know, if you've got quality equipment that you're no longer using and you're not a collector, you're not somebody who's going to display it, get rid of it. Yeah. Sell it. Yeah. Get some money Absolutely. back and use to put towards new equipment. Yeah, and this is most important when it comes to camera bodies because oh, yeah. camera bodies are basically like toilet paper. Yep. Um, you know, it's fully disposable. There, there, there's no value to them at all. You pay six thousand today, in five years, it's worth you know six hundred bucks. Yeah. Or less. So right. you know, the the bottom line is, is if you want to collect something, collect lenses. Those lenses will be around, you know, for a lifetime yep. and beyond. You know, those are okay to collect, but. Um, even with lenses, if there's a specific lens that you use on a specific product, let's say a macro lens, and you just haven't used it for a year now, 
just get rid of it. You, right. There's no, I mean, if you do, obviously that means you don't do a lot of macro work. And if you need it, just rent it and then give it back. There's no reason for it to just sit there and collect dust. It's not going to, it doesn't, it doesn't help your bottom line at all. So, you know, one other thing that's uh, very important is, you know, we've always said this, this is very important. You know, the best camera is the one that you have in your pocket. Oh, yeah, you know, Chase Jarvis. It's thing, so, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so, so important. And, yeah. you know, so many people will keep a camera on them, but what they'll do is they'll have the cap on, you know, the thing will be off. It's like, no, take the cap off, you know, take it out of your, you know, camera bag, have it in your hand, make sure it's on. It'll shut off automatically anyways. Yeah, it'll keep go it on, on standby You know, mode. keep it on standby. Yep. So that you're ready to make that, you know, shot. And that's so, you know, that's so important if you're wandering around, you're doing street photography or something like that. Absolutely. You know, that it's, it's crucial. It's, it, you just, know, it doesn't happen. And a lot of people, I know me personally, the, the factory straps that you get are so uncomfortable. You know, you hang in this yeah. big body around your neck with the lens on it and it's just uncomfortable to wear. And that's why a lot of people just leave it in the bag until it comes time right. to use it. But you're absolutely right. I mean, go grab yourself a Black Rapid strap. I mean, I, I love that thing, Joe. I know you use it too. I love mm -hmm. that thing. I could walk around with that camera on all day long. It slings over your shoulder to the side. It's not in the way. You can even kind of rotate it around behind you a little bit. Obviously, you right. got want to be careful. You don't bang into things with it and stuff like that. Sure, but, sure. but it really is so much more comfortable. And you're in the ready position. You're ready to go with it. You can leave it in that standby mode, lens off, you know, hood on you know, just for a little protection there and just pull it up, bang away, drop it back down and you're good to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another thing that you should, you know, look into is now that you have a little bit of free time, hopefully, you know, during the summertime, um, many of us, even pros, uh, pro ams, of course, amateurs, they've never read the manual that came with the camera. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous. Uh, I'm no. the same, I'm the same way, right? You yeah. know, oh, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yep. I promise you guys, if you could just spend a weekend and actually take a look at your camera's manual from front to back and read through it, I guarantee you, you will gleam something out of it and it will make your photographs better. I know it sounds kind of nuts, especially for pros. We're like, oh, we know everything. There's something in that camera that you don't know and maybe the fine tuning or the settings or something yeah. that you will know after you take a look at that manual. Well, men in so general don't read instructions and ask for directions, right? So we just kind of wing true. it and figure it out. Now, I agree 100%. And you know what? Our buddy, Rach Sillers, I mean, he just recently re released a uh, new book for the Canon T5i. Right. Um, in fact, I just got a copy the other day and I mean, you know, if get a book by a third party about your camera, you know, may, it won't be mm -hmm. quite as, as dry, let's say as your camera user manual. Um, it will often give you a lot of the same information. And then beyond that, you know, beyond right. that basic information, you'll get into more lighting techniques and, and, you know, camera angles, all that type of stuff. So, you know, there's definitely something to be said about even grabbing those third party books too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This is a way to, like you said, so it's not so dry. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, topics might be, you know, illustrated, um, you know, some type of visual. We are visual people. That's, That's why right. we're photographers. So, you know, just reading sometimes just doesn't work. So yeah, visually is very important. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, another thing is, um, you know, even many pros will shoot in aperture priority or in shutter priority. And um, that's just how they shoot. Yep. And I did that for many, many years. And then finally I said, you know, I'm just gonna start shooting manual from now on because I'm missing shots. You yeah. know, there's certain, there's certain instances that you can shoot, you know, shutter priority or aperture priority. Um, and it works out well. Yep. But as soon as I went over to manual and only shot manual, you know, for years now, um, I just consistently make better shots. You know, once you dial in a specific room or a specific setting, or let's say you have some backlight, um, you know, pulling in, you know, from behind a subject, once you dial this in, every shot after that is going to be perfect every single time. Whenever yeah. you use like a, you know, shutter priority or an aperture priority, you're letting the camera decide for you. It's guessing, it's, it's doing its best. Right. I mean, it's, it's programmed to do its best, but you will miss great shots you know, consistently. Yeah. Whereas if you would just figure out manual and just only shoot manual, um, you know, you will get those dead on. I, you know, I encourage you guys that if, if you like shutter priority or if you like aperture priority, which a lot of you do, you know, shoot a shot with aperture priority, take a look at those settings, dial them in in manual and leave them there. Especially and if you're going to stay in the same room too, because, and tweak you it. know, 
aperture priority is i mean if you're if you're doing some outside shooting let's say and and you're going for that real shallow depth of field and you've got your your lens wide open and you're letting the camera adjust for itself and it's consistent lighting and stuff like that then you'll probably be able to get um consistent you know decent shots but you're right if you take those settings drop it in manual mode and then tweak it a little bit and right. now you may actually get even better results um, you know, your exposure might be a little bit more the way you want it and not what the camera thinks that you want. Right. And then what happens is you end up with consistency. Yeah. And what consistency does is it allows you in post-production to do broad paintbrush, let's say, corrections. So right. if you're in a specific setting and you have everything set the same, instead of having one dark, one light, because, you know, after priority yep. thought that, you know, it's it's dialing in on the background instead of or whatever it is, you can actually say, OK, I want to go ahead and take this image and and just tweak it exactly the way, way I want it and then copy those yep. settings right across the entire gamut. And you'll end up with consistency once again right across those pictures. And they will all have a great baseline that you can tweak off that. Right. So, yeah. It's time is money type of thing, and it definitely will save you time. And like I said, it will definitely give you better images in the long run, for sure. Yeah, definitely agree. You know, another thing um, that's important, guys, if you don't do it um, already, is document those photos. You really yeah. need to make sure that every photograph that you share online is well documented. We know that Google and all the other search engines, Bing and so on and so forth, are continuously searching for metadata within images as well as data that is an encompassing photographs. That's what it does, and that's how it discerns what that photograph is of, um, yep. because it doesn't know. It doesn't know what the photograph is. So, you know, really document it, tell a story about it, whatever it is, and keyword that documentation, because that will get that image seen um, by a greater number. Um, very, very important. And don't forget to put your copyright in that documentation. That's also very important, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, absolutely get that metadata into your files through Lightroom or Aperture or whatever. Um, also the watermark, you know, because now you've got it online sure. and that metadata is good and all. And we've talked in the past how Facebook and some other sites strip that metadata out. <laughs> Stripping. Yep, yeah, strips it right out. So at least having a watermark of some type of on there, a logo, you know, just some simple text or whatever, that's really going to help, help at least give you um, credit, you know, and if you're any type of portrait photographer, um, wedding photographer, anyone that deals with people, you know, be sure to get to know them. Don't just stick your camera in their face. You know, if you just talk to a model, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter if they're a pro model or if it's just an everyday person. If you just get to know them for a couple of minutes and they have this nice comfort, you know, uh, they're comfortable with you, you will produce better images because they will be able to give you better images so it's very very important to get to know your subject and not just to jump in there and just start shooting and so many of us know you know we're especially in a studio you're like you know next and we're in there and we're like bang 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 it's like you know take those two minutes to really get to know the subject it will help a ton oh yeah absolutely absolutely so so anyways another thing to, um to to take into consideration you know now that it is summertime and a lot of us are out there you know shooting let's say at events or or, or parks or whatever doing that you know travel photography or whatnot you know if you're at a specific lo location and you're seeing everyone shooting something all at the same angle well now you know what you know what photograph or what angle not to take yeah um go, you know change it up you know shoot from the opposite angle that everyone else is shooting from um it's very very important you know, that too many people just want to just follow the norm and follow the crowd. Yep. You know, it's it's so, so, so critical to be able to get a different image instead of more of the same. More of the same. So I mean, if you same, want you know, to shoot the same image, shoot the same image, but definitely try other stuff. Experiment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's all part of being a creative. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, finally, love your subject matter. Love your subject. Yep. Um, you know, it's very, very important, you know people say oh you know what what is it well you know who, what do i want to be known for or what you know and then what they do is they follow trends oh hdr is really you know uh hot right now so let's go down that road or this or that or whatever you know really love what what you're shooting yep. or how you're shooting or the techniques that you're using and you will produce better photographs 
you know, nine times out of 10. You just really got to love it because that really will help. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You want to shoot what you love. I mean, if, if you're out there shooting day, day in and day out, things that you don't really care about, you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. you make a couple bucks, but it's going to, it's not going to make for an exciting career. So you definitely yeah. want to, you know, or at least mix that sub, you know, mixed, mix your love in with your work. You know, that, if you can't exactly. get out there and shoot something you love for a living every day, then at least try and squeeze it in other times. It, it'll help to keep your photography fresh. It'll help to keep you excited and energized about shooting. Yeah, it, it'll move you into that stellar. Like I always say, yep. be stellar. You know, you have to be stellar. That's right. Mediocrity is dead. You cannot, you know, the mediocre photographer does not get work. That's right. For That's sure. Right. So anyways, you know, um, one thing that we have to talk about before we, you know, get out of here is once again, our featured photographer segment. You know, we want to hear from you guys. We want to see your work. We want to display your work, right? Yeah, that's right. On the last few shows, we've had um, some of uh, the, our listeners and viewers that have uh, called in, written in, um, sent us a comment or what have you, you know, a question. We've answered it on the show. And it, during the process, we would show their website, show your work get it up on the screen. I mean, this gets out to a lot of people and any, you know, any little bit of extra publicity, let's say, that you can do is a good thing. Um, you want to be known within the photo community. I mean, maybe the photo community isn't directly your customer base, unless of right. course you're selling educational information or, or you have a product that you're selling to photographers. That's a different story. And we'll sure. talk to you about that, about becoming a sponsor. But exactly. <laughs> but as a photographer, wanting to share your work with the community is a great thing to do. So definitely, you know, send us an email, shoot us a phone call. Um, you can call uh, our voicemail line. It's 440-345-6707. You can leave a message. Um, it is a voicemail line. You won't talk to either one right. of us directly. So you don't have to worry about that. If, uh, if you're recording and it doesn't sound quite right, just call back. It's no big deal, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get you on the absolutely. show. Absolutely. We need to get out of here, Trevor. All right, we are done. So, Joe, if people want to connect with you outside of the show, what's the best way for them to reach you? You can find me on Twitter, and that's at, that's at Joseph Christina, and that is Christina without an H. Yes, and you can connect with me on Twitter. It's at Trevor Current. All right, everyone, we are out of here. You can get all of our show notes from this episode by visiting visualphotographycafe.com forward slash 116. Dramatic and don't forget followers. to send your questions and comments to comments at digitalphotographycafe.com or simply call 440-345-6707. Once again, that is 440-345-6707. And we will see you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Be sure to subscribe to the show for free in iTunes or through RSS. You can also listen on Stitcher and TuneIn Radio and watch in HD on TiVo. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.